Hi, I'm Adam from Fun, and today we will be looking at Finals Match 2 from the Speedway Signature event where teams 6842K Killer Instinct and 11101B BarkBot face off against teams 2011K Kinetic and 334U Supernova Redeem. In this match we will see how the Red Alliance has constructed a nearly unbeatable strategy and will consider possible ways that this strategy could have been countered. While you are watching this video, try and think about different strategies that the Blue Alliance could have used to win this match. This video on fun is brought to you by our viewers, supporters, members, and also in partnership with the following. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information. Did you know that Fun has awesome merch options, including game-themed merch available at funroboticsnetwork.com slash merch? From cute thematic options to robots and fun-themed apparel, you can directly support Fun and look good at the same time. You can also become a Fun member or supporter through YouTube Join to get early access to most of our content. Thank you for your continued support. Jumping straight into this match on the Red Alliance, we have Team BarkBot starting on their left side and their partner Killer Instinct starting on the right. On the blue alliance, we have 2011K starting on the left and their partner 334U starting on the right. So the most important aspect of the Red Alliance's strategy is actually their autonomous. So we're going to go ahead and watch this autonomous period and see what makes their auto so crucial to their success and their strategy at this tournament. So at first glance, it doesn't really seem like the Red Alliance is doing anything too special, but I'll go ahead and talk about that in a second, about what actually is making their autonomous so crucial here. So it's really just a uh, pretty basic, uh, just a uh, seven block auto that just uses their preload, uh, the three blocks that start here and then the ones that start in their match loader. Uh, but is what's most important about their auto is actually how fast they're able to do this uh, routine here. Uh, you can see that at four seconds here, they're, both Red Alliance robots are actually completely done with their autonomous and they're gonna remain still for the remainder of the autonomous period. Uh, but they actually have their wing uh, on both robots, their wings are in this goal to prevent the, bl the blue alliance from scoring anything more than they allow them to. So if the red alliance has all seven blocks scored, uh, the blue alliance is only able to fit two more blocks in the long goal, which is like a, is a very big detriment to the blue alliance's ability to score during the autonomous period. And f this actually, because they guarantee both control zones in the long goal, this score is nearly impossible to beat. With all seven blocks scored on both sides, the Blue Lions would need to score uh, all but one of the balls that they have access to during the autonomous period, and that includes filling up all, pretty much filling up both control uh, zones in the center of the field, the center goals. So this is a very, very challenging auto to beat. Even with them missing a few blocks in this auto, uh, it's still the blue lines would have to do a lot more than they're capable of at this time in the season to be able to win this autonomous period. So the red alliance being in this position is just super advantageous for them. They essentially guarantee that autonomous bonus, which given that the uh, play so far in the season has gotten a lot more defensive over time and we've seen scores getting a lot lower, the autonomous bonus is uh, increasing over time in its importance and its value towards winning a match. At the beginning of the season, it wasn't too hard to overcome an autonomous loss, but that's becoming more and more difficult as the season progresses. And another advantage of the Red Alliance's positioning here is when they're in this position, any blocks that the Blue Alliance tries to score at the start here just kind of spew out of their robot and don't go into the goal because the Red Alliance is positioned to block them. And then at the start of the match, the Red Alliance is perfectly positioned to go ahead and go for a D score. So I'll go ahead and show right here when the Blue Alliance tries to score, uh, the blocks just kind of spew out because the Red Alliance is kind of pushing against them there a little bit. So they're not able to fit any more uh, blocks in there. And then so right here towards this, like at the start of the match here, both Killer Instincts and BarkBots are going to immediately go for D scores, which is going to give them even better positioning. So they're going to go into this match with the Blue Alliance having almost nothing scored. They're going to have the Autonomous bonus and they're going to have both control zones on the long goals. So 334U is also going to make a really good play here where they're going to sort of predict that 334 or that uh, BarkBots is going to go for a D score. And so they're going to kind of wait for them to make their D score so that they can get an even better one off. So we'll go to watch that happen here and we'll see both BarkBots and 
uh, Killer Instinct get D scores off, but then 334U is going to get an even better D score off on that far long goal. So that was a very good play by them. Uh, so we're going to keep just watching. Uh, they're going to go for lots of back and forth on this top goal happens, uh, but with that autonomous bonus, it's going to be very hard for uh, the red alliance or for the blue alliance to come back from. So I'm going to go ahead and jump back for a second here. So we can see that after uh, BarkBots got a D score off here, uh, BarkBots is right here. Uh, they notice that 334U is positioned on this kind of far side of this long goal that they're on, which is going to prevent them from being able to defend BarkBots, who already has blocks in their uh, robot. So they're going to be able to make a play here to go ahead and go for a score and try to get control over this uh, control zone. And hopefully they can just play very defensively to maintain that lead. So we'll go ahead and watch that happen here. And they'll go ahead and uh, just turn around right there. They'll get that and they'll try to use their wing to push those blocks towards the center to get the control zone. And then 334U is going to get a nice D score on them right there. Uh, but overall throughout this match, we'll just see very defensive play from the Red Alliance to try and maintain their lead. And because of their autonomous bonus that's really all they need to do so i'm going to go ahead and pause right here so right here we have uh barkbots notices that 334u has a bunch of blocks in their robot right now and they can see that they're going for a uh, score right here but barkbots notices that they're not actually able to defend this in time because 334u is already lined up but barkbots is kind of on this opposite side of the goal right here so they actually put their wing out. You can kind of barely see that their wing kind of goes right here. And they go ahead and deploy that wing. And they just kind of wait for 334U to make this score so that they can de-score it immediately. They decide that this is a better play than trying to prevent them from scoring because they know that they don't have enough time to do that. So we can go to press play and watch this happen. So 334U is going to go ahead and get that score. And then BarkBots is going to immediately go for that de-score. And it ended up only being a two balls scored by the by 334U and they're going to get go ahead and push that out. So we'll see there's lots of defensive play happening on this bottom goal. Uh Killer Instinct has kind of just defended this uh bottom long goal pretty much the entire match. Uh and then we're going to see right here I'm going to jump back in time a little bit to right here 40 seconds left on the clock and Barkbots tries to they they notice that they have the autonomous bonus and they have this bottom long goal, and they have this top long goal is pretty neutral. Uh, there's one extra blue ball, but the control zone is neutral. And then they notice that these center goals are where they're kind of lacking. They're missing those that center goal control. So they know that if they push, uh, if they put some pressure on these center goals, 334U is going to have to shift their focus towards these center goals because that's currently their only advantage in this match, and they know that they need to keep that lead. So... Uh, BarkBots is going to try to put pressure on this to go ahead and shift the focus of the match towards those center goals, which is going to essentially guarantee that the long goals stay the same since there's not that much time left in this match. So we'll go ahead and watch this happen and we'll see that BarkBots right here is going ahead and they're going to try to make this score here. So they're going to get a few points here and their partner Killer Instinct is going to go for a score on the bottom center goal as well to try and capitalize off of that pressure that BarkBots was putting on the blue alliance right there. And then now that the Red Alliance is in this very advantageous position where they have three long or three goal control and then a neutral goal and then they also have the autonomous bonus, they're really going to play just very defensively. They're just going to kind of be pushing both Blue Alliance robots around for quite a while towards the end of this match. And then right here, we can see that uh, 6842K right here notices that there's really just not much that the Blue Alliance can do at this point. Um, they... There's just like no no blocks that they really have access to D score that would be meaningful. So they decide that this is the perfect opportunity to go for a park just to try and secure that win right here at the end. So they're gonna make that decision with five seconds left to go ahead and go for that park. So and then BarkBots will try to go for the double park, but they don't end up getting that off. So this is just a very impressive like domination by the Red Alliance, and it all just kind of was just complete like landslide after that autonomous uh where they just had that huge bonus of the 10 points with pretty low scoring match here and having that 10 point bonus was just so crucial and they were able to put themselves in a very advantageous position with their just how they were positioned at the end of the autonomous period and they were able to just play super defensively 
to just maintain that lead throughout this match and just completely dominate here. And this was a similar strategy seen in some of their other matches. So uh, I want to focus a little bit on what the Blue Alliance could have potentially done here uh, to counteract this strategy. It's not impossible to beat this strategy even though it is very difficult. So the first thing, uh, I'll jump here. So the first thing that's very obvious is if the Blue Alliance was able to do something that was very similar, if they were able to get here and put this pressure like the Red Alliance is doing before the Red Alliance was able to, if they could have gotten there and had their wing positioned how the Red Alliance does, that would have been uh, even better for them. So pretty much just one way to counter this strategy is just doing the same thing but better. Um, so if the Blue Alliance was able to do that, they would have just swapped positions and they probably would have been able to dominate this match. Another thing that they could have done if they were sure that the Red Alliance would have been faster than them is if they had an autonomous that could have focused a little bit more on the center goals, they would have been able to get uh, control of the center goals during the autonomous period, which with the Red Alliance messing up their autonomous a little bit, uh, getting control of those center goals could have been enough to win the autonomous period. And it at least would have been better than them uh, kind of trying to score balls, but having them just sort of spew out because of the Red Alliance's position. So this also would have given them a better position at the start of the match, where they would have already had control of the center goal. So it would have been Red maybe would have had the autonomous bonus still, and they would have had control over both long goals, but the Blue Alliance would have had control over the center goals. So they could have used that to sort of pressure the Red Alliance, uh, by having a pretty, like, relatively even scoring match uh, at the start, which would have forced the Red Alliance to take action and not play so defensively. And then the Blue Alliance could have tried to use that uh, chaos sort of to get some more scores or D scores on the long goals and potentially get the upper hand in the match. Uh, another thing that they could have done is uh, something similar, but if they didn't have control of the center goals, they could have tried to get that control earlier, which would have had the same effect of putting pressure on the Red Alliance and forcing them towards those center goals, which would have given them uh, some more opportunities to try and make plays on the long goals as well. So the Blue Alliance really needed to try to use the center goals to put pressure on the Red Alliance and try to take control of this match uh, back a little bit. Um, instead, I think the Red Alliance just kind of put pressure on the Blue Alliance, and then they decided when they wanted to start playing the center goals. So the Red Alliance really just controlled this match throughout the whole time. Um, and I think that if you are if you encounter opponents who are using a similar strategy to this Red Alliance, you really need to try to utilize the center goals to take control of the match for yourself and try to put some pressure and make plays based on that. That was a very impressive execution of a very impressive strategy by the Red Alliance. I'm definitely interested to see how matches will play out at upcoming signature events. Let us know in the comments how you think that this strategy could be beaten. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to FUN to keep up with all of our content. I'm Adam and thank you for watching this episode of FUN Analysis. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future FUN videos. Build your alliance and discover why so many VEX alumni choose Kettering University. Every student at Kettering experiences their cutting-edge co-op programs that seamlessly blend the professional and academic worlds. Kettering co-ops are a fully immersive working experience at the leading edge of industry. Head on over to kettering.edu slash VEX to learn more about their incredible programs and get more information.